certainly not as uh, the business is not as uh, was not as confining or whatever. Yeah, you know, right. As it is now. Yeah, oh yeah. We get away. Well, we were ourselves. We were. Lot. That's right. We, but speaking of being ourselves, were you there when uh, you know Mr. Crockett Walter was very good friends with Bob Porterfield? Yes. Oh yes. And he yeah. came by one time. And I don't know whether you were in the group or not because he had a, he was basically talking to Merrill and Art out there with our prime right. newscast. But I listened in. I got the best advice I ever got in my life. Just be yourself. It's yeah. the easiest from Walter, person oh, on the, well, not from Walter, from Bob Porterfield. From Bob Porterfield, okay. Yeah. There's already, you know, Walter Cronkite and, and, yeah. and Chet Huntley and yeah. all of those guys. You just be yourself. Easiest person on earth you can be. So I've been Johnny Wood for all those years. Right, and exactly. it works. Well, I mean, right. seriously, That's it's, right. it's easy. And, you know. and the reason I said Walter is, is Walter, I went to him one time and I said, Walter, I, said, I just don't, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I said, I just, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable. I don't know what I'm doing. He said, listen, do what you do, you know? Do yep. what you do. Don't listen to anybody else, and it'll be fine. That, and, that and it fit. advice came from Robert Porterfield, the yeah. under of Barter Theater, I'm sure, because he was, yeah. yeah. And, and Walter was. Walter passed that same advice on to me. Yeah, he was an excellent teacher. I really enjoyed working with Walter. Uh, he, he was smart. He was tech. hard to work for. Listen, I mean. <laughs> they teach you. I mean, you've learned. I know that. you had those oh, yes. lectures yep. where he would pound on the desk, emphasize those yeah. points. <laughs> yeah. And if he didn't have a desk. Yeah. Wherever he was you know, at the time, he wanted to tell you something. And he wasn't bashful. He no. would tell you. Oh, he didn't you know. And he was right. Oh, yeah. And one of the things I remember about Walter is that he drank coffee like water. And we had a little uh, place over here in the old newsroom where they kept hot water and it was instant coffee. We didn't have a coffee pot. Oh, nasty stuff. And Walter would come in with his cup. It was corroded for like probably five years. And he wouldn't measure anything. He'd just take the coffee jar, dump it in there, and then pour some water and drink it. I mean, it's like, it looked like motor oil sometimes. <laughs> Evelyn kept this potted plant. Oh, no, yeah. And he would pour the <laughs> dregs yeah. into that plant. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. a real gruff voice. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Makes it grow. Makes yeah. It grow. <laughs> Because he was, uh, one of his hobbies was growing roses. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he poured any of that coffee on his roses. No, I don't think so. But, and here's <laughs> that plant survived. Survived, yeah. Uh, it did. thrived, on, I guess. It's probably a monster. Uh, and here's something that I remember uh, about Walter. He did it to everybody. He was, um, I, I think, the, not, not the joke, but the reference to Walter around the, the, the station in the winter was the bird man. Because he yeah. wanted to be sure the birds were fed. He had... Dave Cooper, somebody in the art department, fixes just this little sign that when we were on the air in the winter, it said, feed the birds. And it would be up in front of us. And so, needless to say, Dave Cooper, Don Sieber, and the rest of the crew, well, hey birds, how's it going? You know, yeah. just something to that effect. Well, the birds are on the air, but, but uh, yeah, it, it, we, I, we, we need to do a documentary or something, and get everybody together and, and, and do I it. I remember when Art was doing the weather and, and uh, Jack Mallon came in with a shovel of snow because Art had forecasted <laughs> no <snow>. sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Schlock yeah. all over him. Oh, uh, yep. And I'll tell I you. I remember the goats got loose. Oh, yes. From the Nick Carver show <laughs> while Nick Carver. Art was on the air doing the weather. And again, <laughs> these were waist up shots. So right. Nobody saw the goats, but Art did. And you can see his, and Art was a pro, let me tell you. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you can see his eyes if you're back in the control room looking down. At and Wallace Coffee was directing. I was waiting to go on here at sports. I didn't know the building was full of goats. Yeah. And <laughs> he says, what the world's Art doing? He's not looking at the camera, you know? Yeah. Which is very unusual. Right. right. And, this, and whoever was running the camera, wasn't Cooper, anyway. Mike Lampkins. Anyhow. Might have been Mike, yeah. Anyway, he says, we have some goats in the studio. Some of Nick Carter's livestock got. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Carter did a show and uh, uh, he, he, he sold furniture, yeah, and he, yeah, there was furniture. always yeah. the hound that was in the, the oven or something. He'd open up, you know, what's yeah. the dog say? And yeah. He always brought some kind of livestock with him. Well, the prop room was right behind the, the, the studio part. And his goats got out. His goats night. got out. It was fun time, for yep. sure. And uh, uh, we lived just a couple I'm more sorry, moments. We, we regress. We, we do. And I, but I did want to mention that, uh, you know, back in when we were there, we had the Colleen Harris show. And uh, Dave, of course, they were coming in to get ready to do, to get ready to do, uh, set up for Colleen's show started at nine o'clock. 
And of course, being the characters that they were, they'd go over and put pots on their heads and I'm doing newscasts, whatever Dave could do to break me up. And then later, I think, well, Colleen, Colleen left and then they came with uh, uh, Ann Aker's uh, Rumper Room. Rumper Room, yeah. yeah. Colleen did a, a woman's uh, type, woman's show. type show, cooking show and oh. other, other things. And, uh, and so boy, those, those were the really good old, remember Jack Trayer's restaurant mm -hmm. too? probably would have come through this building the way that, or no, no, Cumberland yeah, Street would have, the old, the old building we were in, Jack Trayer went down Moore Street and over towards the, the apartments now, I guess. And remember he had a, um, a sandwich name for everybody in the news department right. at CYB. I don't remember who was the ham. Uh, it wasn't like me. Might have been, uh, <laughs> might have been Merrill. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, it was a lot of fun back in those days. Well, you know, you mentioned Anna Akert. Uh, she did the romper, mm -hmm. very, she did very well. And she was in here not long ago with a bunch of kids. Really? Well, uh, and had her scrapbooks with her. And I asked her if she remembered the time, it had the safety phone. She always had a message for the children, you know. And it, it was a dead phone. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hooper wired it up. Oh, of course. <laughs> and and again, everybody in the building knew what was going on. And let's sit there. Here, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Here's the safety phone. And you hear Dave, he had this yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, voice and you could hear him. <laughs> oh, we really have a chief on today. And what? You want to? Tell the children to be sure to be careful riding their bicycles. She was sadly been all this yeah. stuff while they was hollering, goodness knows what in her ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, and went on with the show. She was good. She was good, yeah, absolutely. And something, I, obviously, I would have gotten used to it, but the thing that you have as you People get into it. People would get fired for doing stuff. You say, oh, yeah, you know, today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, I'm glad that, you know, folks had a good sense of humor back then. I'm sure a lot of it drifted over to Bob Smith and oh, other yeah. folks, but they... Oh, they, there's nothing bad. No. Nah, yeah, but yeah. he wouldn't tolerate... Not a whole yeah. lot, yeah. But he was, he was pretty cool, dude, too. He was too. fair. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was fine. But I was going to say that back in our day, we didn't have earphones with the director telling us what to do or it when to get great. out or something. Yeah, it was, it was just... Great. Everything was timing. It was a lot of fun. And I would have gotten used to it, of course, but I noticed, like, folks wear the, 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 the earphones today and all that, but... Um, my goodness, 44 years, uh, what, what's it like now? Did, 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 did you uh, Let's see, I get got up, up and say? I got up at 7.30 this morning. I did put on a tie. Yeah. Not for you. Oh. Well, I thought we were, I was supposed to do a, some kind of promotional thing here. Oh, I see. So for the this, station? This is my yeah. promo unit. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, you know, the, the yeah. shirt, the red tie, and the right. blue blazer. Okay. If, well, you, well, if you notice on anything that I'm on the air more than once, you know, in a promotional announcement, I have this on. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I'm not like Charlie Linebarger. I do have more. Than you do one. have more than one. <laughs> but this, this is what I wear. It's the most neutral thing you have. Right. Um, you know those politicians do this too. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry, I mentioned that. Uh, right. Yeah. And uh, but I was, I was going to ask, um, did you get up after you'd retired and didn't have to come in? Did you get up thinking you were late because you looked at the clock and it was like six o'clock? Oh no. my gosh, I'm late for work. You know, didn't no, happen. But a couple yeah. of nights, I have reached over and turned on the alarm clock. Said, <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, wait a minute, I don't want that thing to go off, and I'll turn it back off. Yeah, right. Out of habit. I awaken during the night and uh, look at the clock and notice the alarm will be set. Yeah, maybe you said it and thinking, oh, mm -hmm. I'm glad I did that, I'd be late for work. Well, one Saturday morning, it's happened more than once, uh, Mary thought I'd overslept and got me up, and one day I was almost leaving the house before I realized it was Saturday night. Yeah, day. right. <laughs> so then I go back, and I'm raising cane with Mary, you woke me up. He said, well, okay, go back to sleep. It's Saturday. She got mad at me. Well, you know, that's a no-win <laughs> argument. That's folks. right. Don't ever do that. <laughs> no, don't ever. That's true. <laughs> you will lose every time. You uh, What time did you actually get here for the, for the day to start? Well, it depended on which show I was doing. Um, uh, when I've, I've been working part-time six so actually some days i might get here as early as a quarter of six or somewhere six. around between five yeah. and six because okay. everything is so well done by our producers now right but you, I, I, you know i go oh, oh, copy yeah. and sure. so forth and uh, try not to make any errors and make sure that as you say no big words a lot of stuff gets inserted uh change due to time restraints yeah. and constraints right. and so forth so they will pull stuff and tell you that p3 has been killed We've replaced it with such and such, and you know, and you're reading something else. Yeah, you know, right. That, <laughs> yeah, that, trying to like you know, uh, it's chew gum and, and walk at the same time, or whatever. And sometimes some fresh stuff is inserted, you know, yeah. some developing news, and, and they can uh, put it in the prompter without having to run the script down here. Yeah. You know, there are not that many people, and one producer, you know, or two some days. So um, I've had a few surprises. I'm but sure. Nothing, you know, and they have pulled a few. Zingers on me on the prompter. 
Right. Uh, it's making just, me read stuff that I right, and wouldn't, I, wouldn't I, have seen otherwise. And I'll bet it, it's, it's a good thing Dave Cooper here. Particularly in my latter yeah. uh, times. <laughs> you know. uh, they got a lot of folks that I know that uh, could do some little messages, and I would intro them without knowing who they are. Yeah. <laughs> they hid that from me. So yeah. It's kind of to get a surprise. But can you them. imagine what the teleprompter would read if Dave Cooper were here? Oh, uh, be, uh, I haven't seen would, David. Everybody while, would have been fired for sure. Yeah. Most one of the most creative people I was ever around. The guy was a tremendous artist. Oh yes, oh he, yeah, uh, very much. So. Cartoonist, right? Although the uh, those commercials for uh, Leo's uh, Leo's Exterminator were done yeah. and drawn by well, Randy by, Brown. Really, Randy, Randy did those. He did those right upstairs. Yeah, too. right. Yeah, they was very very a talented lot crew of, around. Lot of well, the art department then too had to make all of these live stage cards and we did a lot of stuff as i mentioned live mm -hmm. the commercials i remember yeah. piggly wiggly which is now food city would do live commercials during our newscast at six and they would send a guy in uh, with all this stuff right and yeah, jack would read jack mallon would read the script off camera mm -hmm. and you know, the today's specials at piggly wiggly three cans of stokely beans for a dollar 98 or whatever yeah, whatever was. yeah and this guy would build a display three cans of Stokely beans and put a sign at it on a table. Uh, it was covered by like a sheet. Yeah. It had one camera on it. And, and they'd take that shot while Jack would read that. And so he would read another item, which was on another camera. And that guy would sweep those cans of beans off there and put up, Start you know, carton of milk or whatever. Or chips, know, whatever. And yeah. all arranged, you know. Yeah. And that's like a 30 second. Sure. 30 seconds, yeah, they're moving on for sure. It was fun to watch. Right, it was. Well, listen, I, I, I hate to end this, but yeah. I, I know you've got Two a busy Two of us day. together to talk. I don't know what they're going to uh, Like I said. How are you going to edit all this down? Well, you have, James. You've got to have it down in, what, six minutes or something? Something like eight minutes. I don't know. We talk, we'd probably talk 15. We could probably we talk, talk a couple 30 hours. 30 minutes. Yeah. But it, it's so I'm good sorry. To, to see you again. Great reminiscing. It's enjoyed been it fun. so much working with you for those couple of years and enjoyed watching you through the years. And, um, of course, I want to say congratulations on retirement, yeah, and, I'm and uh, certainly wish you the best. Many, many years of enjoying it. Uh, you certainly deserve it. And if I had a farm, I would bet that we were going to we'll be seeing Johnny Wood in his boat on the lake, drowning a bunch of worms. Well, either that or, and, or wasting my time with lures. Or, yeah, well, I've taken up fly fishing. And now. Fly fishing. Then? It's yeah. not easier, but it's easier to do. I can. The, my fly rod and my boots are out there in my truck. I bet they're cold. <laughs> you uh, know they are. Ooh, I'm pulling those things on today. Yeah. But seriously, I could go out there and be on the river in 10 minutes and fish for an hour or two and go home and not have to pull with the boat. Mary would prefer I do that unless my son is sure. with me on the boat. Too. Right, yeah. Oh, speaking of your family, you got Mary and your son, John. Is it John Andy, Jr.? Andy. Uh, Andy, that's right. Andy. I got three grandchildren. Right. They're all wow. almost grown. My goodness. <laughs> One of them's 25, almost grown. Yeah. Uh, I got an underemployed college graduate. I got uh, a grandson <laughs> who is an everlasting junior at UT. He likes college. Not. Professional student? Well, yeah. no. He's got a girlfriend now. She's straightening him out. Thank you, Emily. Okay. And I got another one that's 19 that's a sophomore. She's 20. Gosh. Wow. My uh, goodness. You Houston are old, aren't you? Oh, I am. <laughs> well, I think we were cut pretty much from the same mold. I'm not going to. You must be what, 35, um, 38? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you're a couple, three years older than I am. So. <laughs> but uh, again, thank you so much. Thank I enjoyed you. it. Uh, and let me say a special thank you to, uh, of course, ARC TV over in Norton, Ernie Binko and the crew for airing uh, on the road. But a special thank you for on this show to um, Jack Dempsey, Vice President, General Manager at WCYB, Tony uh, Venable, who is, Howard I think, son. Is, uh, That's Howard's son, son yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, he is what production manager, I guess. He is, and promotions. And promotions. He, he wears right. a lot of hats. Right, and especially a, a big thank you uh, to to the lovely Tara Taylor because I know she put together mostly did she most did. of it for the farewell to Johnny. She did, I and know. and she also coordinated uh, us being here for this, and I appreciate Tell everybody. You what, working so much. with Tara for the last four years has been some of the most fun I've ever had in this business. She yeah. is she is a real crackerjack. <laughs> she is, and yeah. she's right from around here. She grew up in Raven. Raven, yeah. And so. Preston Ayers, who uh, is on the show now, uh, grew up uh, in along the border of Washington County, Tennessee, and Greene County, Tennessee. And, okay. So I mean, they're farm. So still some locals. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Well, so uh, everybody's local. I consider Tara a close neighbor then, since I'm from Norton originally. Okay. And, uh, 
So it's, it's, it's great. It's been great. It's been great talking to you, my friend. And like I said before, enjoy your retirement. You certainly deserve it. I planned it. I wanted to do it while I was still a little bit healthier. There you go. Sure. Yeah. And the best to you. Okay. All right. And thanks for watching. And I hope, to I hope you'll join me on my next stop on the road.